Hello everybody, this is Alexandra Metters of GalacticConnection.com and today is March 3rd, 2015. And I just wanted to uh, give you a heads up. If you haven't been on the website yet and checked out the daily blog page, please do. It's at GalacticConnection.com forward slash daily dash blog. You will find an array of topics, everything from spirituality, conspiracy, UFOlogy, quantum physics, free energy, you name it. But it's always through the filter of trying to provide either history or what's going right on the planet. We want to show you not only awareness, but have you focus on the end game, which is we are going to get our power back. So with that said, what I'd like to do is bring on our next guest. And boy, this is an interesting one, I might add. Uh, this is Jay Essex, for any of you who have not heard of him. He is a world-renowned healer, and he does energy enhancements that are very, very interesting. Um, he basically touts himself as an awakener, an enhancer, and creations historian. I would equate him to one of the very few on the planet who has probably all of his million strands of DNA intact. He can see everything that's going on. And he is going to share a lot of information with us today. Maybe clarify some things that you can process. As I always say to everybody, keep what works for you, drop the rest. No one's trying to tell you what to think or how to think. Okay? This is strictly for you to fill in any blanks that need to be filled in. So also, Jay has got some really cool stones and um, some other really cool devices that he's hopefully going to you know, give us some information on. But other than that, while you're uh, listening to this, to this uh, radio show, please pull up his website. It's J S six. That's E S S E X dot com, and you can go up there while you're listening and enjoy some of the information that's up there. So, hey, hey, Jay, <laughs> I'm a poet and I don't know it. Yeah, <laughs> you rock, babe. I forgot to show you something. This is some rhodonite. It's beautiful. Yeah, that really goes with you, your energy. Oh, I this love it. Sel- this with some selenite and it's some deep, uh, I'm going to send you some, some deep, uh, it's been called Magnuson on other planets and it keeps popping me in the head. It won't leave me alone. Um, it's, uh, oh, for Pete's sake, um, <laughs> uh, deep uh, garnet, garnet is oh, what we call garnet. it here. Ooh. It's run, it's run, it, and this is from India. It's triple A great. You're going to love this stuff. It's rest of art, and that's you. Arr, big, tough lady. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> no, I'm totally, end- totally into purples, magentas. I mean, if I can yeah. show you my, my, this is my very professional recording studio. I'm sitting on my bed. Okay. Yeah, well, you, you can see mine. This is my <laughs> studio. <laughs> Someone said, take the pictures of the cars down, do this. And I said, why? It's only me, you know, for Pete's sake. It's, you know, it, it's important for people to know nothing has to be, quote, unquote, perfect professional. There's no such thing as perfect. Be yourself That's because great. that is the most awesome thing you could possibly be for yourself and for everything, not just one, around you. Because Thank plants, you. you know, stones, everything's alive. There, yeah. There's, you know, there's energy, sentient energy, which is spirit. Uh, pretty much everywhere. Even water has these weird beings. It's really kind of neat. It's awesome. Well, listen, before you dive into, like, uh, giving us all this wisdom and knowledge that you carry in this small brain of yours, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do us a favor and tell us who you are, where are you located, and how did you even get started on this path? Um, I'm in Duluth, uh, Georgia. Uh I've been around a lot, a lot of different places growing up. My father worked for IBM. Everyone thinks it means international business business machines, but it really means I've been moved. <laughs> Isn't <laughs> and, that uh, true? That's so true. Yeah, I know but, many uh, um, work there. Yeah, I just uh, um, I've always known things, uh, done things. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, my dad offered to knock my face off uh, my head uh, when I was a little kid, and I kept uh, telling him who was on the phone before, you know, they picked it up. And it wasn't, I wasn't being smart. 
it was like one time the phone rang and I told my mom, my adopted mom and dad, whatever, told my adopted mom, I want to talk to Annie. I want to talk to Annie. And she goes, hey, you know, I haven't answered the phone yet. And she answered the phone. She goes, oh, hi, Emma. You know, her sister. And my dad's like this. Oh, lucky. And I'm like, oh, I just want to talk to Annie, you know. It's like, <laughs> so it's like, oh, for Pete's sake. Um, and I just known things the first time I did anything um that I remember, I was a, about a year and a half, and my adopted mom threw me across some rocks uh, on a jetty uh, right next to the ocean, and my gra- right at the ocean. My grandmother caught me, and uh, so I thought I was going to hit the rocks, so I jumped out about 30 foot away. I was floating about four foot above the water, and then my grandmother actually touched me, and then zoom, I went back in the body. Wow. Um, but as time went on, I was made to literally just pu- pull that in, and the original, the female part of the original first being literally kept my, as well as the, the male, literally kept my energy down as I see it as an expression towards my ankles to keep it from being released, what I am. Our friends in uh, uh, the Anunnaki and stuff here on the planet, yeah. they have satellites everywhere. They can actually read your individual energy, and they take those wavelengths, those, those frequencies, they plug it into their computer, and then they can actually track you through their data bank and find you in past lives. And, you know, they can do all kinds of stuff. Our friends in space, our family there, now they have better equipment, but the guys here, they've got some real good stuff too. Um, so they, you know, so, yeah, so that had to be so suppressed so they didn't know who it was yet. And then uh, 2008 on my birthday, 727, they she let loose some of my energy and poof, that's when it set off the alarms. And I'm looking up like I'm feeling all the stuff coming everywhere and I'm like, Okay, this is interesting. You, you know, when things started moving around the house, so it kind of got exciting. So, so what would you um, say is your? I mean, what is your ultimate mission here? Because for those that are familiar with Jay, he is constantly with a capital C talking about when he's getting out of here and returning back to where he came from. And now he's suggesting it's going to be sometime in August of this year. So this is one of the reasons that Jay and I are wanting to do some interviews before he decides to leave this plane of reality. So what is it you're here to do, Jay? Yeah, um, when when I leave, it could be anywhere from, uh, I'm seeing it past the end of April now, uh, but it will be before the end of the year is all I know. What's inside me, uh, Arrow, when it's time, it's just going to shut the body down. Uh, It kind of played with it the other day. uh, with some other stuff that happened, but uh, um, uh, yeah, just to remind me, let me know. It's all good, no problem. Um, but I was, uh, um, I've been in body one more time, one last time for a reason. Um, the female part of of me, you know, the better part of me, Lily. Um, uh, she's the one that they've called Lilith. Her last life was Marilyn Monroe. Uh, she's her eyes. If you look at her, are so beautiful, so loving. They yes. actually pull you in. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. that's, uh, that's why, uh, um, they called Lilith, uh, who was actually Lily, um, the mother of, uh, demons and the great seductress, the, the great seductress, that's why, but relating to the mother of demons, that's because, uh, when she and I, well, she and I came here a long time ago, uh, I made the Red Adam body in Atlantis in a little place called Evie, which is what everyone calls Eden. It was actually 10.572 million years ago. And then she came within 48 hours. We, we brought the red skin Adamic race. We made the red skin out of the, I made a red skin. So did, uh, uh, well, she had it too, plus this other lady who actually was a red Eve. Um, but anyway, we made the red skin out of the ash, volcanic ash. That was right here. Uh, wow. on, that was right on Atlantis, which is in a Bermuda Triangle and then going up northeast towards Europe. Um, and it will come up again, maybe 2084 or something. There'll be stuff going on. Gaia's down there now, and on the lower right-hand side, she's getting ready to start shaking things up. Uh, Gaira, the energy that's in uh, um, uh, Essenite and Star Essenite, uh, she's in the Pacific Coast, and she's getting ready to tear some stuff up over there. Right. Uh, January, right. yeah, January of next year, I'm going to be getting really, I'll be out of my body. I'm, I'm going to be getting very involved, too, in the Pacific. People are going to see that there's actually humanoid reptilians here on, on this planet. They're going to see them. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it, but we definitely need to prepare the masses for this shock and awakening. That's for sure. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. Crazy. So now you said that you were you. So basically, what you're saying is you were Father God. Uh, no, um, there's uh, the thing with the God concept. That was the original. 
uh, first being uh, male and female. They never have a life. When they came out of the first dimension, they were actually 27.5% negative. It's just what is. As a matter of fact, negativity actually comes from particulate matter. In the first dimension, uh, where there's, there's all these different energy fields moving in and out of each other. Uh, four huge energy fields came together, and then they just started hanging out together. And then here comes another uh, energy field we call electricity. Electricity isn't just part of us. It's older than all of us. It comes into the mix, and then it just starts mixing together. And then something happened that, it, it, you'll, that other, than, um, other than my book, this is the first time you'll hear about it. There's parts of this energy as it was coming together jumped out. It's a different type of energy. There's actually a different being other than the first original being that that made itself male and female. I, I call them electric ons because they have electricity in them, but they're not just electricity. Uh, I have a, I have one friend here, an acquaintance that actually has that energy inside the body. Um, they have no negativity. They're different wow. now. A, as these four fields plus the energy were moving together, here comes some heavy particulate matter mixed in with that, a little bit of chemical reaction, and poof, it's made. 27.5% negativity. It came from the uh, amount of the matter, uh, the heavy particular matter that's in there. That's now, uh, something else no one knows. There's four more first beings growing inside the first dimension, and the first dimension is protected by that energy. That's part of me. Nothing's allowed in it. Nothing. Is that, it, does it, that it, have it, anything, with, Jay, does that have anything to do with the eight-pointed star when you go back to some of the old hieroglyphics and things like that? Are they referring to the, the four sets of parents? Uh, no, actually, there was three sets, but as soon as you said eight-pointed star, that has something to do with the crystal design that was the basis, uh, a base um, crystal design for, uh, like, a star drive. It's wow. a type of crystal that actually they used to, to drive starships. I never knew about it until you brought it up. Wow. And then I'm just I'm looking at one for the old stuff. Oh, by the way, uh, on Pakal, Pakal uh, they call Lord Pakal, King Kal, Pakal of the, of the uh, Maya, on the top of his sarcophagus, they got. They say that you know that I was falling into this pit of you know whatever. No, that was a scooter. That's no joke. If you look at yeah, in Plank, that was a scooter. It had a little crystal drive on it. I'm not kidding. <laughs> all the th- all the things, all the things in the books. There's so much bogus stuff. You know, a lot of people. A lot of wonderful people are doing everything they can to figure out what they can the best way they can. Man, do I honor that and appreciate it. But it's just different. I, I'm looking at this stuff. But, you know, it's weird. I'm all over the place at the same time, not just in talking. I mean, I'm actually there. <laughs> okay, okay. I just have to Sorry. apologize to everybody but because I really just got derailed. <laughs> it's, it's my fault. I'm, it's, you know, it's... I'm sorry. It, there's just so much. There's so much in here, sweetie. I'm just trying to. No, that's okay. No, I, I think you're hilarious. One, I think you're yeah, hilarious. Yeah, when I touch on one thing, it opens up volumes. I tell you what. Explain to everyone what the true what fall I'm, was about. What the true fall? Fall. The fall of man, or the fall of the earth, you know. The oh, fall oh, oh, the- uh, oh, okay. Um, well, see, the uh, from the very beginning, uh, um, that uh, what I talked about the first being coming together in the first uh, 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 in the first dimension when it came out. Uh, well, it, it started becoming sentient. <clears throat> it said, "I am," and it, it starts moving around and moving around. Remember, it's not male or female; it's just everything. It's the original first being, and then it, it gets a little bigger, more sentient. It gets bigger, and then it goes outside of the uh, um, first dimension and sees nothing, and it goes back in there, grows a little more, and he says, "I am." He goes, "Hell, I'm alone. You know, I'm the only thing." And it literally, the first emotion ever felt was loneliness, and it literally formatted itself into two pieces, not holographic similar pieces, but different for company. So, it, and, and then it also made a format into itself. That once energy fell apart, was pulled apart, or came apart, it would never be able to go back again. So it never had to worry about being alone. Wow. Male and female. That is Bada fascinating. Boom. It's simple. Is it, it, is, I, I'm watching it. I, it's like I'm sitting there with popcorn and having a drink. You know, it, It's like so, a show. So that's similar to the Big Bang Theory. Well, no, actually, that's a little bit different. That's how you make a universe. Um, you can make it when your source energy, when you're big enough, strong source energy, you can create and collapse a universe in less than five seconds. What happens is you take some of that really heavy particulate matter that I was talking about, you take that, and then you explode it, and it just opens up into all these different things, 
and it and then the stars start to only start to light up. This does not include any bodies. This is only the physical mass with no spirit, which is sentient energy within it. It does have the energy that's that that it had originally to maintain cohesion, okay. but no spirit being sentient energy within it. So that's how that's and something that big happens that quick. I'll bet it goes more than boom. That's that's wild. Do you do you agree that uh, Mother Earth, so to speak, fell from a ninth dimensional realm? Uh, when the planets were made and came in, then uh, uh, there's different fields of essence that were released from the first uh, from the two be- original being that made itself male and female. When they put their energies together like two hands, but not becoming one, they put together a huge part of their energy and uh, just released it. And then uh, they took different. They took negativity out. They did all, it, this takes hours to explain. But what happened is one of those fields, one of those big fields of energy. And as fast as I talk, you know that's a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, I wasn't going to say anything, but I have to be careful because you're so freaking clairvoyant. <laughs> it's like I was saying earlier, my book is just about out, and it, it explains all that, how it came about. And, and when you read it, it's just like, huh, it's so simple. It's logical. Um, logical. All the square pegs go into square holes, triangle pegs and triangle holes. But um, So what happened, there's this huge field of universal essence. The female is planets. The male is stars. And then from this big field of essence, uh, of universal essence, the different planet bodies that were going to have life on them, where there was going to be life growing on them, they were given female universal essence, and it was put in there. That's how Gaia got there. I talk with her all the time. She's working on my head today. She asked me to um, uh, take the coating off of my, uh, the armor off of my DNA so she could change it some more. So if I grow two more sets of ears, don't worry about it, all right? I'll try not to. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that, that'll never happen. Uh, I tell people that when I crank them up too. It's you know. Hey, hey I, I have head absolutely. Head bigger. I have absolutely no preconceived notions in interviewing you, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> None. It, it, I I love this because I'm so serious about everything, and every time <laughs> I put out a video, I'm so concerned about what I'm, I'm seeing. How other people will react. I'm seeing other stuff going around at the same time. And then I'm also fighting little pieces of source energy that keeps attacking me, trying to run me. And if there's so much going on at one time, and you know, people you know say, what? he doesn't yeah. know. You know yeah, what? Yeah, it's all fun. There, it's, it's the thing is, people are going to receive this information however they need to receive it. And we can't do yeah. anything about that. All I want to do is make sure that you have so much cool information that I really feel can fill in some gaps for people, including myself. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's what it's all about. It's like my audience is awesome, by the way, and yeah. they're very enlightened. Seriously, they are. Yeah, no, I'm smiling because I'm looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing a bunch of happy people, mostly female. A lot of them got a lot of smiles on their face. Um, a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of them have light hair. Oh. Um, the, the actual, uh, you know, uh, the red and uh, um, uh, blonde type hair. If you have um, the actual percentage of them that have that is higher than the actual percentage of uh, um, uh, people in the population that have it. It's a higher percentage. Wow. Well, yeah, I, I, don't, that. I don't know what it's. It, you know, it's just it's weird watching stuff. Um, it's a total trip. Uh, well, no, wait. You just said something that I've never heard before. You said the stars are male energy and the planets are yeah. female energy. So. How does that work? Like, does a planet... I thought the planet actually broke open away from its mantle and became a star. Uh, no, never happened. Oh, my God. Yeah, yes, and you know what? You know what's really cool? It, it confuses a lot of people is the moon. Uh, so many people think of the moon as really powerful female energy. This is why. Because the moon has the... Our moon has the energy within it that to, for it to hold... A particular matter together, you know, for it to maintain cohesion. Yeah. That's it. There's no life in it. Now, there's life on it. People running around all kinds of problems. However, you know, it's just a mass body of stone. Now, the male star energy from the sun hits it. It reflects off of it, softens it up a little bit, and then it comes through Gaia's love, the female, the female uh, planetary love, and it hits us. As a dual energy, it's very strong. That's, That's really why it's interesting. so powerful. Now, do you agree that the moon is actually an artificial creation? 
that was uh, towed in towed into this solar system? No, no. There's things on there that have been uh, uh, that need to leave, and they will. Yes. Uh, the, the U.S. government is one of them. Yes. Uh, the, our, our landing, our, our initial landing in what '69. Of course, that was a big farce. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it's like people say, we've never been there. I said, yeah, I'm walking around right now in a building over there. It's under the ground. Yeah, that's nothing. They should have seen what happened on Saturn. It wasn't the U.S. government, but that's where the Anunnaki headquarters used to be. I know. that got- I've heard so many things about Saturn and what's been going down. And actually, it's been great news. Cause it- yeah, it sure is. It blew the hell out of the place. Yeah. Uh, this the city out there is destroyed now. I went over there one time, and it, uh, there's different part of my energy hour outside, and I just went over there. There's a council table. It's it's kind of ovalish, and there's one head dude, and then there's like twelve guys, and then there's uh, the top dude. He actually saw me. They're all sitting trip chairs. The guy he looked at me, he saw me, and he actually went to attack me. I'm like, what? I said, you're kidding me, right, son? And then part of my energy pulled my silver coating off, which is protective, so the thing could reach in and try to touch my heart. And I was like, I'm looking at my own energy. I said, what are you doing? And I'm getting mad at it, getting ready to attack it. And then I, then all of a sudden, he's just like, calm down. And the guy touched my heart, and that said, I went right at him. That part of Arrow, literally, it was part of the outside of him, literally grabbed this guy and just popped his head. He did that so the guy would attack me. And once something attacks my heart, then he has the legal go-ahead to physically destroy it. So he was, like, using me to go around. So anyway, and then so took him out. Then I went back later and then uh, um, uh, took a look at him. And I, I did the, 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 the top dog again and then the guy next to him. But I did that myself. And then later went back and I told everyone they were going to leave. And that's all. And they had so much time. And it was like about 38 of them. I just went in and just popped the heads. You know, it's like when I go into people and then I hand your brain, your, your brain and skull, it actually grows. This is a proven physical fact. You know, your abilities kick up and everything. As long as you have nutrition and as long as you apply yourself and don't sit there on the couch, you know, just sitting here, I'm ready. Let everything happen. No, you. It, it's like a car. You want to you enjoy your car, you got to get in it and turn the key. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so they, uh, um, it, it, so anyway, the, when it's time, the part of me that's inside, uh, era, it has to get involved in something like that. And then it does boom. Interesting. Uh, and then big stuff happens. So let me ask you something completely off track from Saturn. Can you give us your perception of multidimensionality? Yeah, sure can. As a matter of fact, I wanted to bring it up as soon as you talked about, uh, in the very beginning, talked about uh, um, quantum physics. Uh, I want to explain how that actually works. Um, when they, uh, when people talk about, uh, well, multiple dimensions, um, I better go there first. Um, there's the first dimension where everything actually happens. That that That's like, uh, I, I, we, I call it home, we call it home and origin in, in our family over there, source family, uh, which of course is no better than anything else. Um, and the source that will, the, the source that's left, except for some little problem children that I'll take care of as soon as I dump this body. Um, we all feel that because we're here to serve and, and protect and love and take care of. Yeah. Um, not like the original thing. Um, but anyway, uh, that's the first dimension. Now, the second dimension was created for everything, all the different fields and everything to stay in, uh, as like a home. Some place it could stay. And there is, you know, a lot of people talk about this temple's on the other side and there's this and that. No, there's not. However, when we communicate with each other as spirit, sentient energy, we can talk in any kind of thought process. So we can make our, you and I can talk outside a body and we can make ourselves a temple to sit down and have ice cream and uh, brownies and uh, uh, whatever, uh, you know, because it's a thought process. But what's there actually is, is, is just energy plus some more of that heavy particulate matter. Interesting. Um, Interesting. And then it's, the third. So dimension. basically, it's like the the dark sea of life, like like a like a void, yeah, yeah. Or like a like a. Yeah, it's like an empty. It's like empty except for everything in it. But it, it is a certain dimension. But it's a soft vibration, and there's barriers in there to separate things. Like people call them veils. Uh, I'm very familiar with it because Arrow put all the veils down below this planet. Uh, the uh, first dimension was always there. The first original being uh, made the uh, uh, male and female got together. They made the second dimension and the third. And then everything after that, what's in me, Ara, literally, he made all the rest of it. That's why I'm kind of up on it. Uh, Now, remember, what I am 
is this physical body with a piece of the energy, uh, with a piece of spirit that came from Gaia, that it's like uh, that was put into this body. But because Ara is source energy, when he went into this body of birth, it just takes everything over. It bonds with it. It's like if you take two pieces of clay and put it together, they're going to bond. If you take a piece of clay and wood together, they're not going to bond. It might make a mess, but they're not really going to bond. Um, I can't help it. That's why when I uh, when I go when I crank people up, uh, a five percent or more of this of the energy, not spirit. I don't put a piece of me in them to run them. I give them energy. But uh, at least five percent of what I put in them, I, and I tell them ahead of time, that's yours forever. That makes your soul stronger forever. Fantastic. That, that, yeah, that's just the way it works. Um, but the uh, um, the thing with the dimensions, though, um, there's the th- and then there's the third dimension here, and then in different locations, there's other dimensions. It's just like that the one arrow built in my head, where everything that's been taken out is stored. So when I get out of this body, then there it is, and it, a lot of it will be rebuilt and changed and cleaned. Um, uh, so uh, down here on this planet, we have seven dimensions below us, and then now an eighth one. I built seven of them, and the original first being uh, the male and female part had built their own little dimension. It had a lot of orange and black in it, and uh, that's where they were going to retire. They're gone, so that dimension is literally now here on the Earth, and it's below us. Wow. You know, so there's eight dimensions below us. That's where the Fae are. Uh, the uh, um, uh, all the half and halves. That's why the five Adams and Eves came here. You know, when the original uh, female was around in the very beginning, before uh, we went to war. Uh, you know, uh, the the two, the male and the female, and I. Um, uh, I asked them, you know, why did I come here? Why did the Adams and Eves come here? And then she showed me the Minotaur and a female kind of getting together, and she was explaining that uh, they were trying to mess with uh, uh, the uh, natural growth of the animal and human species on this planet, which needed to be kept separate. Um, uh, so when a soul is second stage of evolution or higher, uh, and there's only three stages that have been allowed to be received right now, and it was only originally set up for five anyway. Uh, but when they were actually, uh, when I actually uh, came, the, I mean, if there's a planet where there's no set formation, the format of beings and everything yet, just some animals and stuff, um, uh, I say that lightly, it like, it's no big thing, but no, it is. Um, but then the, the spirit, the soul, can go to the planet and say, look, Gaia, I'd like to go around on you for a while in a body. Is that okay? And Gaia says, yes. She sends up part of her energy to meet you. And the two of you come together and you pull physical mass out of the planet. And then you build a body. And and when you build a body, it it finishes closing up right in the solar plexus. Wow. And and then as long as you don't hold it too long, you can drop it. But, But depending on your personal energy, that might be two weeks or two months, two and a half months max. Does okay. that have anything so, to do with the seat of the soul? You know where they say the seat of the soul is in the solar plexus. Um, that's that's uh, well, that's it. it that seems kind of relative. It, it's it, I, you know I what see I mean? that. You're holding time, the, it, the, like as a practitioner, you hold all your emotions, your lack of confidence, your lack of security, your your yeah. shame, your guilt, your unworthiness. That's all held in that solar plexus region. It, it, it's it's where it all came together. Wow, that's so interesting. That's where it goes in. That's where it starts, and that's where it finishes when the body closes Makes off. Sense. I watched myself make the red atom body. That was weird. Um, <clears throat> the Adamic race. We were if you know the avatars, the big blue guys, the ten foot ones. You shrink them to five foot, make them red. Get rid of the ponytail. Get rid of the tail, and that's what we look like. I saw these light teeth coming off my face, and I I, I jumped right out of that uh, meditation. I, you know, back then I used to relax and meditate. Now I'm just you know all over the place. Uh, but uh, so um, so when you say the the red race was it was it also the white, the black, the brown, and the yellow? Yeah, there was five of them. I'm okay. the original redneck, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, it, it's so funny that I, I wear the overalls and everything, and I love my southern friends. I miss them so much. Um, uh, but uh, um, it, uh, like I said, the, the five different Adams and Eves, we made the bodies from the different places. Uh, believe it or not, the white race came, uh, the white Adamic race came from up north. Uh, and, and, gee, white people are usually better off in the cold. I wonder right. why. I mean, so it's, like, it's the Nordic, like the Nordic area? or Exa- Nordic, Exactly. Okay. 
Exactly, where there's there's tall Nordics and stuff are running around uh, over there. Uh, there. There's still a few hanging around. You know, we have a lot of friends in space hanging around. Uh, and then uh, uh, from uh, uh, the uh, yellow race uh, around uh, the Asian group. Right. Okay, that now that came from some strange stuff. Um, that was the, that's the one race that's different. It has it has to do the, the skin color. It has to do from stuff in the ocean. It actually has something to do with fish, okay, the, the animals, the, where the actual thing came from. And it also has a touch to do with serpoleans. Those are the three things that made the yellow. I know it's crazy. That's Those are the three things that actually made the yellow skin. Who a very the good the serpoleans? Uh, the serpoleans. That's the uh, name they gave us for uh, Serpo, the planet. That's the greys. Oh, wow. That's what people wow. call the greys. So is that yeah. why they have slanted eyes? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, it, it, yeah it's, it, it's pretty weird. Uh, yeah. The Adam and Eve are, uh, I know them both, uh, uh, the uh, the yellow Adam and Eve. I know all, actually know of all of them. Uh, so what but, about, uh, so what about the friends. brown race? Now, the brown race, um, uh, they they came from uh, uh, the same Adam and Eve, made the same uh, five, uh, made the same race five different times, the same color race. Um, that was from, uh, like, Africa or that area. Uh, like this, there's been five major ages so far. We actually flopped into the fifth. Um, the ax- the Earth was supposed to change axis. It didn't. Uh, you can even li- you can talk with Greg Braden and uh, uh, the science of heart math. They'll say it, the heart the, the heartbeat of the planet stopped. It was supposed to switch. I don't know. It doesn't switch. You know. Right. Yeah. That that was error. Uh, excuse me. That was Aramalius, uh stopping it. That was the bigger part of error. Uh, but anyway. Uh, so. Uh, um, uh, the the land was so fertile. Yeah, it was so incredibly fertile that uh, you know you, you could you could just about uh, um, uh, whatever you could put a rock in the ground and grow a city. I mean, you know, being a little funny but uh, facetious, but I mean, it, it was so fertile it was incredible. That's where that color for the skin comes from. Interesting. Uh, yeah, What's the most um, fertile it, soil it, in the it, world is Africa. You know. Yeah, the, and the the, the tan uh, uh, the tan race. Um, uh, that uh, that's the, the Adam and Eve. Uh, that's from the sand. Uh, they were in the sand area. And guess guess who the tan Adam was? Martin Luther King. Wow. They were all source energy. Wow, that makes sense. Okay, now what about the black race? Uh, the black race, uh, a, a little lady I love so much and uh, uh, very infatuated with. Uh, um, no, that's the black and brown. Is, is that's the same thing? Oh, it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, her name was Lori Spear, um, and then the uh, the Black Adam. Uh, there's a book called The Law of One. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like Temples of Atlantis or something. The Law of One, Keith, something or other. He was the uh, 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 Black Adam. He's he, he's out cruising around right now. I was talking with the energy that was in MLK. I was talking with him about stuff going on in uh, uh, the Middle East, you know, because that's you know he's he made those. They're like his children, you know. He's a, really attached to them. Uh, and there's something going on in Syria, so I went over there and I went down in there and I found there's a whole bunch of Anunnaki prisoners down there too. Um, uh, I would just got the name. I went to go right there to it. Um, and there they were, and the next thing you know, my cell phone's cutting on and off, and I got all kinds of stuff going on, and I, I just laugh. Every once, you know, those satellites, they used to read us. Every once in a while, I get a little PO'd, so I just go up to the satellites and just crank up my energy, and all you can see is this yellow gold all over the screens. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We'll keep doing that. So, so Jay, does it does it make sense that each of the races is in a particular region of the world? For example, yeah. you know, you have the yellow race in, in the Asian countries and you have the brown races in the, like, South America, Africa. Right. Is there a right. reason for that? Like, where they all yeah. landed? Yeah, that, that's, that's where the Adams, those particular Adams and Eves uh, landed each one of the five times. Um, and that's, so that's where the major growth happened. And, of course, as we evolve uh, and grow uh, as a uh, species, we start moving around and inter, uh, uh, you know, marrying, you know, intermingling, whatever. So was, then, uh, was, the first, was the first seed or first race the red race? Yes. And then uh, what uh, was after? Came, How did it go? Came, the red? The... I, I, yeah, well, it, um, uh, I came first. I landed in a little place called uh, Edne. E-A-D-N-E is the best way to do it. 
Uh, the Greek language is actually a short modified version of Atlantean. Um, it was in Atlantis. It was in a, a town. It was in a country called Pisidia. Um, and the town was, like I said, Edna. It was right in the water, and you could call it a garden. It was so beautiful. Um, and then within 48 hours, uh, Lily was here. And then within two weeks after my arrival, all the other Adams and Eves just, you know, boom, boom, boom. They came in and made bodies. And they didn't go to the same area as you? No, 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 no. Heck they went no. to they different to locations on the planet. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 for example, South Africa is in one location, Right. Right, because that, 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 you and I the, talked the about that. Or, uh, right, the black or dark brown race. That's and where then they the came Irish, from. the Ireland area, isn't that one? Uh, actually, north north of there is where the uh, um, the Nordic, the north. white people okay. started. Yeah, it was oh. just a little bit. It was more honestly. Uh, Maybe um, Scotland, huh? It was icy. It was mm-hmm. icy, and then as we came down lower, you know, then the Adamic race as it started moving down lower. That started building some in the Celtic tribe, uh, tribes, and as a matter of fact, I was there doing all kinds of stuff. Maybe that put some of the red in there. I don't know. That is uh, really interesting. Now, I was just watching something the other day about the Druids, and it was very disturbing. It was completely contrary to anything I've read, and they were basically presenting them as a bunch of um, – they basically were cannibalistic. Do you agree with that? Uh, did they do some sacrifices and stuff? Uh, yeah, uh, they did some nasty stuff, but you know what? Um, uh, they were, they were just, there were some nasty ones and, you know, a lot of ones. You were there, you were there and you had a, uh, like a tannish looking, uh, uh, leather outfit on, which, you know, which meant that you were positive and not negative and you supported life instead of uh, doing what you wanted with it. I just, you know? I was just curious. So basically, this is what we need to learn, right? Is that there was good and bad in every society, every yeah, timeline, yeah. every group of people, even exactly. galactic races, right? Exactly. And it's not just on this planet, it's everywhere. There's positive and negative frequencies in everyone's body. That's like when I look at people, like when I go into people to crank them up, I see who they are. I see what type of energy they are, when they came out, what uh, what they are, how long they've been around, basic lives, uh, the, what they're composed of. Uh, I can t- I look at their uh, core energy, and I can tell them. Uh, I look at the energy in the body. I can see everything moving around. But I look at the core, and I I tell you, okay, your orientation, like you, uh, your orientation is stronger heart than anything else. But your solar plexus is right there with it. So it's really hard for me to say the heart's stronger because it's really really close. But your heart is a little bit stronger. But the one that takes over to actually run things is your solar plexus mm-hmm. because everyone's solar plexus is very powerful. Um, uh, so I just I you know. That's just the only way I, I, you know, I just see everything like that. It's all broken down. But there's positive and negative vibration. The positive vibration is very high frequency. It's much quicker, very small uh, wavelengths, and it's more like light. It's more like, you know, a white light. But let me say something. Uh, there's a reason why there's uh, a little bit of negativity. It's not a bad thing. Um, when I see a, a, the negativity in, in souls, for some reason it goes 7%. 17, 27, it goes all the way up to 97. That's what um, I was going to ask you. Is it every 10%? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have weird. no idea. As a matter of fact, when I saw the first uh, being, when Original Mother finally came to me the first time, and I looked right in her eyes, and I read 27.5%, I said, well, that's kind of weird, the point five, and then I, and then she stabbed me with this sword, and I'm like, okay, we're going to have some issues. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the fact that she was negative, it... it, it made me concerned, and, uh, you know, I mean, that she had that much negativity in her, because when you're source, that's way too much. What it, now, where did you, where do you determine the cutoff of what's too much negative energy? Um, uh, boy, that's a tough one. Um, when, uh, when something is 27% negative uh, frequencies, uh, it's something that many people would call gray. I hate to attach colors to it, but there are colors involved. Uh, when someone's twenty, when something set, when someone's seventeen percent negative, usually uh, in their life they're doing really good stuff, and uh, you know you can pretty much count on them and everything else. And then when they're twenty-seven, that's uh, it gets a little bit funky. When they're thirty-seven, they might turn around and snap on you and kick you or something. Uh, and then when you go up higher, there's a problem. When you get up to sixty-seven percent negativity, you have someone that's capable of doing some really bad stuff. I mean, forty-seven's enough. But when you get to 67, there's more of a trouble. Now, 
Having said that, we have to look at the different negative frequencies. I've met, I've, I saw two girls in a, um, in a Starbucks when I went in there, um, and I looked at them, and they were both 87% negative. And I said, wow, that's a lot. And I looked at them, and I, I realized immediately they're not aggressive. Their personal negative frequencies are leave me alone, not aggression. Mm. As long as something isn't aggressive, it was being left alone. But now that the other side has been, has been being cleaned up viciously, um, if something's negative, it's going to get cleaned or it's going to disappear. Um, really uh, interesting. That, I, I have to tell you this. I just interviewed a guy by the name of Tori Smith, and he's very uh-huh. similar to you. He's really like all of his, a lot of his DNA is lit up, and he can see yeah. everything. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say he can see her. He's, he, he's, he's pineal-based energy. Incredible. But you know what he really loves? If you give him some barely cloudy quartz and some nice clear quartz and some uh, stick selenite and a piece of lapis, you put that in his hand, he's going to vibrate. I'm going to uh, do that he, for he, him. Yeah. I'm gonna do, yeah, he's he, really he's, doing he's a lot of work for the planet. I mean, a lot. Yeah. And one of the comments he made that lines up with you is he said he can't understand it, but every single person that he's run into that was a Satanistic, how did he say it? Anybody who was a child sacrificer, they always seem to line up to the uh, to the thirty seven percent. For um, he he would say thirty seven percent. He would find it across the board. Every single one of them. Yeah, there's uh, there's some that are twenty seven. I'm looking right now. Uh, there's none that are seventeen. Uh, but anything that harms something like that needs to be destroyed. Uh, let me say this too, though. Um, uh, this is what 2012 is about. Um, this is how a soul or spirit, sentient energy, is put into a physical body. A man and a woman get, to, and this is all relative. The man and the woman get together. Uh, they create an embryo. That embryo grows. When that, that embryo, the man and the woman both have what they call a kundalini. I just call it core energy. It's got the two different energies. The two snakes that go around the uh, the core energy or spine going up. Uh, that, that's the energy. That's the particular uh, personality you. That's uh, you know spirit from uh, uh, the other side, and then the other uh, snake uh, in that uh, kundalini. Is the energy, the actual living spirit that comes from the planet, is part of Gaia that she releases to go with you to have that life. Mm-hmm. When someone dies, an animal dies, person dies, plant dies, I'll talk to both energies as they go home. Um, the uh, so this is something I actually see. That's that's where I'm, uh, this is coming from. Um, as cool. they go, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm fl- I'm flowing all over the place. Um, uh, as the embryo starts to grow a little bigger. Then finally, uh, the uh, the source energy, the female source energy, will take her hand, uh, take her source energy like a wall, and she pushes to the left side of the brain the uh, spirit of the planet, leaves it there, and then comes in here and puts in your visiting spirit, your soul, whatever you are, uh, in there, and then puts energy over that and the whole body, and that's how the soul or spirit is put inside the the visiting spirit is put inside the body. Now. Um, when that barrier is in there, it's uh, it, you're not talking to yourself too well. If you're an engine, if you're like a big engineer for putting up skyscrapers, a uh, neurosurgeon and stuff like that, that barrier's thick. When you're someone who's a uh, quote unquote psychic or something like that, the barrier's thinner because the two parts need to talk to each other. You need, need to be more awake, more aware. December twenty first, uh, I kept saying life after life that I had, you'll never see the world the same way. That's all I said. The reason why. Is because you're going to see more of the world because I'm going to rip that damn barrier out as much as I can without interfering with your your life. Those surgeons and everything else, they still have most all of that barrier. Could you imagine a neurosurgeon working on your back and all of a sudden he sees a little elf run across your back and he up oh, better put this one in a wheelchair. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. you can't have that. Um, so anyway, um, even if something's seventeen uh, percent negative, which is clean and light, um, or even seven percent. Um, if that barrier is still there, they, and everybody can be controlled, it goes into conscious mind. The, the original uh, male, uh, the, usually the female would run stuff. She was the father god everyone was praying about. Uh, I did too when I was a kid. Uh, no big deal. Um, it's just that we know so we know better. Um, the uh, uh, They go in your uh, conscious mind. Sometimes it's like a drill going right in here, or, or they go in through your ear usually. Um, and uh, they literally can just run you for a little bit. Um, and then make you do whatever you want, and then all of a sudden you say, like, why did I do that? What what happened? Well, you were taken over. You, you know, that's that's wrong. That's not going to be allowed to happen anymore. 
so as I started ripping the bear, uh, the, the December 21st, 20, uh, 2012, um, thing, I was already fighting so bad with the original male and female going crazy. Um, then I just said, well, this is so screwed up. Nothing's going to happen right. So I went in everyone in April of 2012 and just started ripping the barrier out so they could start really becoming more awake. And it's like, huh. And then, you, you know, you see things, people are talking about stuff and they're not getting so freaked out. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's like it's almost making sense and they're calm about it instead of, you know, running out the door. And not going into total confusion. Because that, yeah. that's been the worry for so many people that those that are starting to come online and become more awake, what are they going to do that's taken us like, you know, decades to figure out? And they've got yeah. to learn it in about three hours, <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, it's, 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 it's like that field energy, uh, what I am inside, what, what I'm, att- what, and when I say what I am, you know, you know, I'm part, I, I've become attached to error. So I, I don't see myself as the physical part of the planet anymore. Uh, I'm error, just uh, slightly modified because it's got a different piece of the planet. It's like my last life, Gandhi. Okay, that was a different piece of the planet that was added to error. But I, because I'm part of error now because he came in and consumed me and I'm part of him, it's it's like it's, it is it is me. But, um, you know, it's just a little different. It's like whatever. So what? Yeah. It's like I like to say uh, I'm the shoe that's on this big foot, right. whatever. You know, yeah. How uh, big is your foot, Jay? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, all, well, when it gets broken, it gets a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. By the way, his foot is broken. That's what he's talking about. So, okay, clarify this. Yeah. Many of us have been told that there were seven universes. No, there's, there's, uh, there were. Uh, come twenty, come December twenty first, twenty twelve, there was over three thousand of them, but a bunch of them were collapsed. Um, now because there's so darkness one... because of darkness. No, 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 because the uh, uh, there was no need for them. I'm going to explain that in a second. Right now, okay. there's about one point four two thousand uh, uh, new universes, and there's new energy going in there. The new the new bodies. People are going to have lives and new bodies, the fey bodies, because it takes out 72 to 78 percent of all the abuse in life. But first, let's go back to the uh, let's go back to why those other universes were there. Uh, the original uh, male and female first original being, they literally they never had a life. They literally found out by Lily and I had the first more than 200 million lives. You know, nothing else. All there was is the planets and the energy from the planets making uh, um, the different bodies, uh, like dinosaurs and stuff, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, it's a, lot, a lot of people say, I can talk with, with uh, animals, but I can't talk to dinosaurs. Well, you can't talk to them because the only energy in the dinosaur was that of the planet. So, the, you know, that energy goes back to the planet and stays there. It doesn't fly around ready to talk. It stays there back at the planet. So that's why you can't ever see dinosaurs and talk to them unless something gives you the image of a dinosaur and talks to you through it. But people who actually can talk with animals and stuff, they can't ever find them. That's why it's a simple thing. Huh. Um, so, uh, it's very simple. Yeah, it, 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 it is. It, Go it's, ahead. I'm so desperate trying to get everything out. You know, and I'll, it's okay. I'll start it's okay. Over. I'm just giving you a hard time. Go ahead. I love it. I love it. Um, but anyway, uh, um, uh, so uh, the there's all these universes. The, the original male and female they found out with me and Lily uh, what I, what I am inside. They made it really strong. They took all the when they made they made two different sets of source energy that were clean with uh, with like less than two percent negativity. They did that because they wanted us to be weak so they could control us. Now, Lily, wow. the the bigger the the two big pieces, the bottom piece was made bigger, and it was given out of this big piece that they did this with. The bottom piece was bigger, and the the frequencies that are loving mother were put down in there. The frequencies that are fortitude and power and everything else were put down in there. Now, in the very bottom, that was Lilith and Ar- and Aramalius. Lily is the focal point, the strongest part of the uh, um, energy that was in Lilith. Ara, what's in me, was the strongest part of Aramalius. We were taken out so that we would go into bodies, we'd make bodies and start having lives. So then we'd have a life, and then every time you have a life, when you come out of the body, you grow more. So Lily would go into Lilith and charge her up, just put out a pulse, and then Lilith would grow a little bit. I go in Aramalius and do the same thing, poof. So after having all these lives, Lilith and Aramalius were growing, but Lily and I 
were really getting big and strong. And because I was given all that fortitude, I was getting crazy big. That, that's how I eventually became the freak that, uh, well, that's how I eventually became the freak that I am today, whatever. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm not talking about the body. I'm talking about what's in the body. <laughs> Oh but uh, um, so it's it's fortitude and protection. You know that's why I can take such a beating. Um, so okay, so tell me something. Okay. Seriously, I mean I'm serious about this. The incarnation process. Okay. Yeah. We have we have so many theories on the incarnation process and the fact that supposedly when we pass, we're manipulated or we're. Uh, what's the word, were lured down a certain path, and they say that it's bad to go down the path where you're, fa- you're following the light because there's a whole matrix and agenda that brings you back into that wheel of karma, and they force that basically brings you back into the reincarnation cycle, and then you go into these big, uh, massive warehouses, and they zap you with gazillions and billions of electrical volts and they fry your memory and then instead of you really apparently when you went in front of a council and said yeah i'd like to have this family because i'd like to learn this and this is where i screwed up last time and blah 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 you basically want to have that contract but by the time you get to that place other beings that have established themselves as the authority of this matrix they're determining no i don't think so i'm going to put you over here with that really shitty family and you're going to have a miserable existence, and now I you just see, want to that, make sure that you are impeded, and you cannot go and do what you were here to do. What is your that's, what is your feeling? That scares the crap out of me. It reminds, <laughs> me of it reminds me of my first date with my ex-wife. Oh, no! Oh. <laughs> Seriously, hey, that's pretty me, much no. what most of us think. It's like, okay, yeah, what's yeah, the validity it's, it's not, of that? It's, it's not like that, but that ties in with uh, me finishing your question that you had asked earlier. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, now, see, the original um, male and female, when they first, um, you, you know, they started putting us in bodies and everything, they realized that we grow and get bigger. Then they started thinking eventually after they knew they were going to make all the souls so they'd have a lot of company, but they also wanted the souls to start praising them. Okay. Now they knew that by getting them bigger, but by, by putting pressure, see when they first started running lives, they didn't know how to do it. So they didn't even mean to, but Lily and I kept getting real big because they were screwing up, didn't know how to run a life. They were really harsh, but that's why they took the strongest energy that was and put it in the body. So that, uh, that you know, it just got stronger, bigger, stronger. And they said, we can grow them by abusing them. And then we'll build all these other universes for 2012. And then we're going to take a soul, the two soulmates. i got to tell you about that in a minute. Um, that we take the actual soulmates, put them together, and put them in a universe. And then let them release their own souls because they're so big now. So we'll have a universe where instead of they release a billion souls, they're going to release a trillion souls, and they're all going to say, praise Mother Father God, praise Mother Father God, like Sylvia Brown used to say all the time. And I love Sylvia. I'm not picking on her. That's what she was, that was put through her. She's fourth wave soul, fourth generation, uh, 3.7, 37% of the way through is when she came out. She's very young. Uh, she, um, her color is amethyst. Uh, her, her head's like yours. It's got a, a, like amethyst-looking energy coming out of the crown. Uh, she's really cool. Um, she did in, in body. She was made to do other things. It's, it's control. It's, it, you know, it, it, that's, that's why a good person can do a bad thing they're made to. Uh, wait till you hear about when people fall in love and angels uh, actually do it to you. Um, it, it, nine times out of ten, angels go, when two people meet, and, you know, and, and they have kids, and they fall in love, they have kids, and then, you know, as soon as they get two kids, it's like, I don't know, I don't know what I was doing with this jerk. You know, this guy's a jerk. I, mean, I, have no idea. Well, I don't know what came over me. Let me tell you what came over you. Angels, your own personal archangels you had, when you two meet, because of the DNA you have together, you're supposed to make kids that other souls can go in. So the, the, you two meet, the archangel goes into the back, right where your spine goes into your uh, uh, pelvic. They take their energy, they run it uh, almost two-thirds of the way up your spine wow. and light up the endorphins in your spine. Wow. And you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's angels, wow. you know. Uh, uh, it, about 85% of the original angels are actually gone now, but that's another story. Um, so we'll anyway, the original, yeah, yeah. So the original 
male and female, they wanted to abuse everything and keep abusing it so that they release more um, uh, uh, souls that would could run around saying, praise Mother, Father, God. They were building a, a support, a, a, an applause support system. Uh, they were trying to big, uh, build bigger, you know, cheerleaders like an empire, squad, an whatever. empire that worships Yes, uh, of work, yeah. So, I mean, that I, I'm getting a little pissed thinking about it. I, you know, they're dead. I, I literally uh, killed them, uh, finished killing them. It took two times. Um, uh, May of uh, 2013 is uh, when they finally went down for the final count, and that's when my energy morphed. NSA went freaky trying to figure well, out so, what happened. Uh, there's, so, 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 so. Well, go ahead. So, so, so uh, get back to you. I'm sorry. I float all over the place. No, no. So, so the idea was when they was to get, they wanted to put the souls back into a body as quick as possible, and they wanted to. Uh, and they say, look, uh, see, you get together with your spirit guides, okay, and then you say, look, I want to let's try to do this, that life, and that life, and I mean, we'll have this event and that event in this life. And we'll do this and that, and then you literally go up to a council of elders. And see, Sylvia Brown had all that right. Um, uh, Aina, her spirit guide, you know, really gave that good information. And uh, who's, she's really cool. Um, uh, she's watching me right now. It's funny. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm about to say something to her. She's like, hey, I'm quiet. Leave me alone. Um, but anyway, uh, um, uh, now your spirit guide's talking. Whatever. <laughs> And now, and now your other your other buddy that you're talking about is looking at me. The guy, the insect guy with the blue, what was his name? Tolek. Um, I opened up a door, and now everyone's coming <laughs> in. Um, <it's, laughs> so anyway, uh, um, <laughs> it's funny being me. Uh, so anyway, they, um, so the idea was um, after you put together your life, and the council says okay, then the original mother would say okay, I give you that life, and then she puts you in the body. She puts you in the body, you know, like I was talking about earlier, and then you know uh, puts a Takes the uh, goes to the embryo, takes that energy, the uh, source energy, puts it to the, the conscious mind to the left, and then puts you your visiting spirit to the right, and then closes the mind up, and then the whole body up with source energy. It's like glowing soft uh, yellow gold energy. Um, and then the, the um, then once you're in the body, she changes your DNA, does all kinds of stuff to you, really abuses the heck out of you. And then when you get out of the body, you're kind of like, hey. And then it, look how big you are now. See what I did for you? And they go. Ah. Ah, uh, yeah, because you're out of the body, you don't feel the pain anymore. Uh. But you know what's going on, and this is why I, as Ara, this is why Ara had to finally act. You know, it's weird talking about myself like like I'm two different people, but whatever. I, I'm trying not to sound arrogant or something. I, I'm not. I'm just. It's just what is. A carrot's a carrot, and a car's a car. Who cares? Um, uh, I just want to do my job. Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, they get to, um, they would get to the, um, they would uh, just. Get people in the body, grow them, make them bigger, and then get them to go in again. And then what would happen is there's something called, I call it the abuse gene while we're in the body, but it's an actual frequency. Because I can read energy in people, I started cranking people up, and I went in and I looked, and I said, what the hell is that? Wow. It's a frequency that's all broken and sick. And I'm like, and I really, I took it, I, I, looked, I zoomed in on it, and I said, is this a frequency that went bad, and I said, no, I, I watched it develop over time in one person, and it's shoved in between other frequencies. So by having too much abuse in your life, you start developing abusive frequencies within your spirit, the real you. Mm. That's detrimental while you're in the body, but also when you get out of the body, body. honey, that's still part of you. Yeah, that's still yeah. part, you sure. know, and that was making people actually that was making people being sentient beings that was making spirit actually start growing when it didn't even have a body. So the original male and female said, hey, this is like, cool. Are we smart or what? And then I'll, I'm the protector. It's my job. In the very beginning, the very beginning, before anything happened, the first life, the original mother and father came up to me and said, we came uh, we came from that first dimension there. We made you like this for three reasons. Number one, you protect us. And I said, okay. Number two, you protect everything we uh, create, make, build. And I said, okay. And they said, number three, when something else comes out of that first dimension, you're going to beat it up and make it do whatever we say. So I said, okay. I never had a life. I didn't know. And then I started having lives. And then uh, I started developing, you know, uh, my, my emotions, what I am inside. And I started saying, huh. 
Yeah, and I said, hey, guys, come here. Let's talk. Okay, number one, I'm good with that. Number two, I'm good with that. Number three, what are you, crazy? I said, something else comes out of the first dimension. I'm going to say, yo, dude, how you doing? Let's have a beer, you know? Uh, it, it's going to be like, hello, how you doing, and meet them. If I have to protect everything else, creation number two, I will give myself, if it's necessary, to, you know, to, to take, to protect them. Mm-hmm. I give you that as my honor. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and they're like, no, no, it doesn't work like that. And I said, yeah. So anyway, they didn't like that. And then the time went on, it was a few billion, hundred billion years ago or something. Who knows? I don't care. Um, I went up to him and I said, you know, I got a problem with you guys. These bodies on all these different planets, they're self-replicating. Okay. They have rights. They are now part of creation. You can no longer abuse them. You are breaking rule number two. And they, and the original female, she said, nah, those are the, those are the vehicles we put the spirit in to beat them up to make them bigger. And I said, no, they have rights now. So this Very fight cool. between me and them was coming for a long time. And the most abused ever was the animals. Animals were being oh, forced no. to go inside bodies. It, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. Um, what do you, mean, what do you mean forced is, to go inside bodies? You mean forced to go they inside They were shoved animals? inside animal bodies when they didn't want to go. They were forced into them. Oh. Yeah, I mean, they, there's nothing more honorable or intelligent than animal essence. I know, I love they're, them. They're, they're incredible. They're so That's awesome. The, uh, going through my life, becoming what, realizing who I am, what I am, doing my job, and you asked earlier what my job is. My job was to come here and literally finally kill the original first being, male and female, number one. Number two, destroy all that I could on the other side that wanted to maintain that format. Number three was to bring all the information I said I would, as Quetzalcoatl, Pahana, uh, and I don't know how many other lives. Um, I kept saying I would come back and give you the knowledge of what's real on the other side. Um, I, um, Ket, uh, Quetzalcoatl, I was a, uh, a real tall, slender but strong uh, white... Uh, um, a uh, young king had a beard and everything, um, uh, and I could literally levitate. And I put, I'd levitate myself on top of those uh, flat top pyramids, and then I talk to the people a thousand or more at a time. That's why they call. That's where the, the Quetzalcoatl came from. It's like a serpent because I was grounded. I was a healer, and I was knowledgeable. But the wings are just because I could levitate. You know that, was, and I was made so I could levitate. Just. You know, and that had to be allowed to happen. It, none that's of that the way, stuff and that's the way they represented it in the art and the um, yeah. However, they could yeah, it, present it's, it. it. It's yeah, it's like uh, the ninth Incan ruler, Pachacuti Inca Yupanqui. That was me. And if you look that up, and you look at the legend of the stone soldiers. With it said when it was time to protect uh, whatever this uh, uh, Cusco, whatever the place was, I can't remember. I, I'm no good with names, but it was time to protect it. There was 313 men of myself, and there was an army of 6,000 at the bottom of the hill, and they were coming up. Well, as Incas, we were big builders, had walls, a big stone everywhere. And I knew I was going to be able to kick some butt when this happened. And the original mother, of course, she was around, and she said, tomorrow you're going to be this and that and everything, whatever. So um, she released enough of my energy through me when they finally came up and to attack us. I levitated about 500 boulders with my right hand, 500 with the left, and I literally threw them in between each other like this, killing, I mean, within, I don't know, within 60 seconds I destroyed about 1,600 soldiers. I, I ripped them up. I mean, could you imagine a 65 mile an hour, 70 mile an hour of 500 pound or 100 pound boulder boulders going in between everybody? They ran, and, and that was the end of the battle. Um, and so, uh, and the legend says that I called the stone soldiers to come fight with us. No, I just went telekinetic. That's all. I'm, you know, um, <laughs> telekinetic. That's all. No, wait a minute. Yeah, you still, you still didn't answer my question. Uh, I'm sorry, I haven't finished. Uh, the but part, I, the I, part I, that I, I really want to know about is, is it really true that we all, honest to goodness, pick these crappy childhoods where we're sodomized, we, raped, we, tortured? No, 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 no. no remember, remember what I was saying, that we put our life together, and then when we get in it, then all of a sudden the original mother would say, okay, this is what you're going to have. So it's not, as, it's not what we so, choose. Yeah, we, we say, I want this and this and that, and I want ice cream and a banana split. Okay, here you go. Eat nails um, as soon as they put you in the body. But then when you get out, then the original mother and father, original mother actually, would say, see how you've grown, see, see what it did for you. Everybody liked getting bigger and stronger. And when, when you're out of a body, 
you're no longer attached to that constant input of emotion. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you're holding on to a, a live wire, mm -hmm. when you let go, it's like, wow, that was no fun. Right. But while you're holding on to it, it's like, holy crap. Yeah. It, it, it's the same basic kind of concept. Again, simple. Interesting. Um, uh, yeah. It, it, so, so we have, we really had no idea what we were going to land in. We yeah, thought we were and, actually going into a, a, a much more peaceful environment. That's what we usually expect. However, after time, we, we were aware that we were going to get slammed a little bit. But you know what? When you know that you're going to grow and you're going to come home and you're going to be okay and you're no longer attached to that immediate constant impulse of uh, uh, emotions and all that physical stuff, you kind of forget about it. You forget about all the abuse you went through. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to get hammered a little bit, but you say to yourself, end result, I came out bigger, stronger. And also, the more you've done it, the more these little um, abusive frequencies were gathering inside you, which was making everybody a little bit like this. I was watching this happen the few mm -hmm. moments I'd be out of body. And, and I'd say, man, creation is sick. I am failing on number two, That's protect crazy. creation. That's crazy. Yes. So is yeah. it, I mean, are some people uh, more targeted than others to go into those situations? <laughs> yeah, I know one. <laughs> we had issues. You know where I'm going what, with this question. Yeah, but uh, honestly, the, the, more, the more heart you have, okay, the more you were targeted, the more of the vibration of hope you have in yourself, mm. the more you were targeted because... They wanted automatic. They put automatic abuse systems in people's life. People had a lot of money that were allowed to keep making more and keep abusing people. Even stupid stuff like ticks, fleas, uh, mosquitoes. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they have no kundalini, just the energy of the planet. They're made to bother the heck out of you. Pollution. All this stuff is made to abuse you. And when someone comes out and they have love and they they give people hope, the frequency that actually is hope literally gives off a light blue aura. When you walk outside of the door early in the morning, you see a light blue sky. The first thing you get is a feeling like this could be a good day. It's called hope. It's yeah. a very natural thing. Yeah. Uh, the heart. The heart is incredible. Uh, yours, a lot of blood red. It's real love. Okay. And, and then uh, um, uh, green, light green is uh, spiritual healing. Deep green is physical hearing, uh, healing. I'm sorry. Uh, it's natural color is a deep purple red. Um, so there's all kinds of, you know, and there's different shades and I'm going to do a book on, uh, frequencies and the auras they give off. So when people can actually see the, uh, aura, they don't need to see the frequency like I do. They just see the aura. They know what it means and then they can help read people. And the, and the heart, the heart, the heart I'm, I'm getting away. I'm sorry. Uh, I just keep okay. going and it's, there's so much to say. Um, okay. but so you're right that, the, um, we do set up some kind of tough stuff for ourselves to go through. But once you got in the body, you got slammed. And then plus these, all these issues with past life issues, where do they come from the way we measure time on this planet with the revolution of the, you know, the, the planet and going around the sun and everything, the way we measure time, um, we should be out of a body. Every, the normal person, the normal, normal spirit, sentient energy person should be out of a body a hundred to 150 years, depending on how tragic their life was before they go into another one. And then, boom, they've been going right into another one. Boom, boom, boom. Wow. They just keep going. That yeah. makes and, sense. Yeah, that's why everyone's got all these past life issues. I see them. I help them with it. Uh, that um, so makes sense. Yeah, it's simple. It's as simple as a goofy old man in overalls, I'm telling you. <laughs> so do, do you, you agree? Do you see my comb? <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree? Do you agree that we're in a um, an out breath mode for the universe? You know how you've heard of the in breath and the out breath, and supposedly if it's an out breath, it's it's expansive, and if it's an in breath, it's condensing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when when, I, when you say out breath, I feel release. That's what I'm feeling in, in your heart and in, in your in your mind. Uh, and by the way, anytime I, I touch anyone's mind, I touch what's on top, unless I feel someone wants to hurt someone, then I'll, I'll go rip out whatever I want, and I'll start talking to them. I'll, I'll show them some dirty things. I love you, Herc. Uh, Herc, he's coming in. He says, calm down, Daddy, calm down. Um, uh, animals are so cool. Anyway, um, I'm sorry, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, a 
according to the Eastern Indians, okay, they yeah. basically talk about we are in an out breath. Oh, I'm sorry. T- cycle yeah, um, right now, where where the universe is expanding and there's all kinds of new it, galaxies it opening up and. Actually, it, it is. Uh, the change is happening now. Is what's in me, Ara and Lily. Lily's hurt. I'm, I, I one of the first things I have to do is fix her when I get out of this body. I love her so much. Uh, the first time, the first emotion I ever felt was loneliness by the first being. But when Lily and I were pulled out of Lilith and uh, um, Aramalius and we came close to each other, as soon as our energy started folding over. That was literally the first time there was ever love. I, if I think about how much I love her, I will bust down crying right now like I'm trying not to. So um, and then un- and unicorn energy came out of Lily and dragon energy comes out of me. Um, so it's, it's, and if you think about a unicorn, now Lily, less than 1% negativity, source energy, beautiful mother, mother love. Wow. Now, unicorns, what's the legend about them? You don't never ride a unicorn unless you're a virgin, you know, perfect, pure, that kind of thing. Right. They came out of us before the before we had ever had the first life. That's when we were as clean as could possibly be. That's why unicorns are like that. Male unicorns came from my male energy mixed in with hers. Female dragons came from her female energy mixed in with my dragon energy. That's where dragons and unicorns come from. Um, cool. uh, yeah, and then they're living and everything. Uh, um, but anyway, um, uh, so what's what's happening now? Is without that, without now that the wicked witch and warlock are dead, uh, as soon as I can get out of this body, five minutes afterwards, the rest of the problem source, problematic source, and everything else on the other side will be dead, gone forever. And then the new, then it's re, we have to reset having lives. Okay, now this is awesome. Nobody, almost no one knows this. Okay, what the way it's going to be done? As soon as the new format is laid down of compassion, honor, uh, um, Integrity? protection. Integrity. Uh, protection, equality, Integrity, and then uh, um, uh, uh, justice. But the justice is my gate. What, what did you say, sweetie? Integrity. What was the word? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, for me, integrity and honor are like you know, Similar. two hands yeah. coming together. You know, um, part of, part of a, a, a true concept. Um, that's that's what has to happen. That's what that's what is going to happen. Spirit guides will not be allowed to lie. Uh, they've actually been made to lie. It's like so, so many readers, they use them cards and they say, I told them, I, I, I gave them the message, it was right, and it didn't happen. Why? Because the, the, the spirit guide gave them a bad message on purpose because that the original mother wanted them to screw up. So she says, hey, you ain't me, man. You ain't me. You, I gave you this, that's it, uh, this punishment. It's abuse. Um Oh, yeah, all, all that's gonna, all that's, all, all that is gonna be done over. Period. There's new angels that came from Lily and Ara. Uh, there's, there's new animals. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, um, the, anim- the new, the new angels came forth just about what a month ago. There was a whole uh, bunch they, of them. They started coming out real hard. Um, yeah, probably about two months ago, three months yeah. ago, something like that. Um, when the third wave of souls was 80% released, Lily and I were both out of body, and we put her in. I cleaned we cleaned each other. I cleaned her up as much as I could, and I tried to get rid of, the, you know, get the abusive frequencies out of me, too. And we put our energy together. We released a wave of energy. That wave of energy, and I should have mentioned this earlier, that wave of energy, the first wave that came out, it's like if you take water and you pour it, just a cup of water, and uh, you pour it out onto a table that's been highly waxed, it thins out until it's like little globs, you know, of water. Lily and I did that, and there was approximately 110 orbs of energy. And then what happens, because like what I said at the very beginning about the, the original male, the original first being made itself when it separates, it can never go back together again, and it would always stay apart. So when that energy comes out in a spirit, it vibrates like this, and poof, male and female. So there's 110,000 female, 110,000 uh, um, male. Now, that when your soul, that's your one and only soulmate. That's the other half of you. You know that that that. That's okay, now when you say soulmate, is that the same as a twin flame? Uh, no, because when people talk about twin flames uh, or soulmates, what they're really talking about is usually one of the five uh, beings that they're here that they're supposed to meet on this planet to have a life with. Um, Interesting. Yeah, most, but do most people find those five people? 
Uh, they're, uh, yeah, they always run into them. They're made to run into them. But then again, remember, please, that since uh, um, uh, since May of 2012 and actually before then, uh, May of 2013 and actually before then, um, everything's been upside down on the other side. That's why, you know, things get up, things get down, things get up, things get down. The, the, the whole spiritual movement, the New Age thing, it collapses. And then it starts building back and it collapses. It's almost like it's trying to breathe for its last air. It's That's why I'm leaving in a few months instead of 2018 so I can let loose what's in me to go home and finish fixing things. Oh, and the neat thing that's coming, you're going to love this. All of all of creation, everyone, you're not kids anymore. You're grown adults. You know what you're doing. You just need to be left alone to do it. There's The new system that's going to be in charge is for angels. And all angels are both male and female. They're what they call G. This, uh, this one, they come to me in body all the time. Uh, one of them uh, I talk to. Instead, you take the word she, take the S out and put a Z in there. Mm-hmm. But it, when you pronounce it, it's like G-H-E-E. That's G. Um, <clears throat> they Or G. Um they uh, <clears throat> each council, each energy field, each different energy field is going to be represented by two reps. It's going to be a male and a female, except for the angels. It'll be two of them: uh, the the old angels and the new angels. Um, the uh, fey souls, the uh, human souls, the Feyman souls, which are a combination of both of them, because human and fey are so close you can't separate them, uh, hardly separate them. Um, and then all, all of them, everything's going to have their own group. Everyone works together, decides how creation runs. When there's a pr- and but the new format has to be laid down first. This is how it's going to go. No more of that old stuff. It goes like this. And if there's a problem, Grandpa will take care of it. That's what, you know the protector. Ara comes in and or Lily. Lily would probably be the first one to come in. The loving mother and father is still the same thing. Because I'm not a horrible person. I'm very compassionate. But I'm I was made what I am. And yeah. when it's time to protect, I'm, I'm a sob and I don't mean silly old boy. Um, <laughs> you know it's. <laughs> So basically it, what you're saying is the new format is going to be more of a council. It's going to, it's going Instead to be Instead of a this council. hierarchy where you've got it's the gonna, two. Yeah, exactly. Dictate. It's going to be about family. Cool. It's like the, uh, the original mother, when I started fighting with her, <clears throat> she said, um, you're going to talk about stuff like Sylvia Brown. And I said, what? And she said, yeah, you're going to talk about mother, father, God. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I said, it's about family. It ain't about you. It's about everything. You're part of everything, but it's about everything. And, you know, of course, it escalated from there, and good it did. It needed to, but uh, so uh, they're you, gone. So, Jay, do you feel that this situation that we have been in for such a long time can be reproduced again? Uh, it won't be allowed to be. Okay, good. Never, never. Awesome. Uh-uh. Um, it, it, ain't, it ain't ever going to happen. Um, as the councils work together um, to get something done, if there's ever an impasse or something, like, you know, Lily or I or both of us come together and say, look, this is how it needs to be, and this is why. This is why it's best for everyone. Mm-hmm. So it'll be a learning opportunity. So Lily the decision and I, will be made for the all instead of for yeah, this, yeah, the... Yeah, for everyone's benefit, and it won't be for Lily and it won't be for me. And you know what? This is perfect outfit for me, the J-man, the janitor. Okay, I fix problems. <laughs> I, I take care of the kids in the school, and I clean up the messes. It's perfect. That's all I am. You know, <laughs> hey, all I want to do is my job. Basically, we all we're all there. Well, so then yeah, that. Oh, this, I'm sorry. I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. <laughs> okay. This is the neatest thing in the world. This is going to be. This is such a. Um, this is what should have happened in the beginning. Uh, now, granted, the original first being didn't know they never had a life, but they also didn't care to find out. But every one of you is different, different frequencies. What you are. As, as what you what you are as a group of frequencies, what you are together, you're going to have lives that flow into that energy field. Mm. You, you're going to have lives that flow with what you are inside, so you'll grow, <sighs> but naturally and into something that's more you. Nice. nice. That is going to be so nice. And, and then plus the new fey bodies. These these solid bodies are going away. Sorry, negativity comes from the solid mass, okay? They're going to be fading away. These new lives people are going to be having in these other new universes, they're fade. You, you're float around. You can float through. You can get together with four or five folks, your friends. You float through a building, through a wall, physical wall. You, you make a body, sit down, eat at the table, have some fun if you want. You can eat or not eat. You don't need to. 
and then you get, and then you just get up and you float right through the wall and take off again. As long as you don't have to hold solid bodies, solid mass bodies, you don't need solid mass to eat. Animals don't have to kill each other daily to survive. We don't have to eat plants, animals. Plants are alive. I talk to trees. They talk to me sometimes. Yeah, Hit me with stuff and walk by. I'm like, they do that to you. Trees talk to you. Yes, they do. Uh, yeah, I'm watching them talk. Yeah, I'm watching you walk around and they, hey, hey, yo, yo, do that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I know really, it's not like I'm that. a total, total nature nut. Yeah, yeah, they love you. Um, ivy especially. Um, but uh, um, ivy and trees, whatever. Um, I'm funny. sorry. I, I just keep going everywhere. Um, it's it's <laughs> weird. It's funny being me. Uh, no, folks, those of you that wonder, medications don't help. I can eat them. And I just... <laughs> so, okay, so Jay, clarify this. Yeah. How... Are you basically describing the Matrix when you talk about the original Father, Mother, God? When people talk about the Matrix, uh, the, 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 what, with what you said in your context and the thought you have in your mind, the Matrix is literally the way everything is set up. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, and as, as that that's you know that that has now been destroyed. There's a new one coming together. And, and do it you will agree? Be- do you agree that basically everything in this structure is based on? the digital zeros and ones, that this is just nothing more than a hologram? No, that's not true whatsoever. Interesting. Not whatsoever, because uh, it's it's um, it's very real, it's very physical. I tested this out once, twice, okay, actually, I tested it out twice. I took a hammer and beat the hell out of my head. Very real. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's people, you can, okay, I feel that. This is here, okay. Um, I, I get in the car wreck. It hurts like hell. Okay, um, uh, it is very real um, because it's hard for us to see through the veil to see the other side because we have dreams and visions. And v- dreams are visions while we're sleeping uh, of different things. Um, we're aware of this other stuff, and we don't like being here, so we tend to want to put ourselves over there and look back over here and say, that's not really real. No, it is. Um, all these dimensions are real. Um, <clears throat> the other, the, from, where we, from where we're at, the second dimension is a foot and a half to the right, three foot up. That's why, when a lot, that's why when a lot of psychics say, I see your angels, they're floating three foot above you. Nah, they're standing. You right, know? Right. That's just where they are, but they, they see them. You know, through the uh, second dimension, either through the scanner, which is when you're solar plexus oriented. Like sometimes you get stuff really clear. You see it really clear. I mean, not sometimes, most of the time. Um, uh, <laughs> when you see stuff, when you see stuff through the pineal, we don't get stuff as clear because yeah. you see through the pineal, but you also see through the scanner, and that's when it, remote viewing right here, astral projection. Uh, uh, it's what we see in the second dimension and uh, metaphysical second dimension or another dimension only is right through here. But when you go to remote view, that goes right through the scanner right here. This big lump I got. No, it's not a hammer mark. That's a. That's. <laughs> <laughs> you could have fooled me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a pretty lump. So tell me, how long has this particular matrix structure? screwed up thing been around been, been around. around um the, the very first life ever had um was lily and i um i've had 10.846 trillion lives by the way we measure time on this planet they average 237 years apiece remember the earth is small so uh, 237 years apiece and then i've had 27 years off average in between lives, the way we measure that. So if you take 10.846 trillion times 237, and then 10.846 trillion times 27, and you add them together, it's a little more than that. Okay, so That's basically how- what you're saying is that this particular structure format that we live in has yeah. been screwed up from day one. Yes. Oh, my God. I was the first screw. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that, that see that they they were trying to learn how to do it, and then they saw us grow, and they said, oh, "Look at that!" And then you know uh, we were trying to the more the longer you're in a body, the more you 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 don't remember anything, and you don't know why things are happening, and, and so you start saying, "Why is this happening?" And then you look for reasons, and it tends people to flow into some kind of religion, and and then you know there's like Which creates a lot of layers. There's got to be some yeah, exactly. A there's got to be something that. that'll help us, you know, because you know inside. 
do something else, but you can't see it. You don't know. You know, these solid bodies are prison. You can't get out unless you commit suicide or when it's time, usually your angels take you out. That's just wild. Your own angels. Yeah, they'll, they'll keep you alive until it's time for you to go. And honestly, it, it sounds mean, but at the same time, um, when it's time to go, you got to go. The bodies belong to Gaia. What's really crazy is when they take different beings and graft them the DNA together and I look at them, I see auras, crazy auras from all over the place. I see different energies from different planets. Wow. And the first thing I do is get pissed. You know, they're, they're trying to play God. Yeah. You know, like they're and the you know, like I said, God was a, the the God concept was put in people's brains by the original male and female. So how do you define the original sin? Uh, there's no such thing. Uh, as a matter of fact, that kind of really bothers me, me uh, because uh, yeah, because uh, Genesis is the biggest lie. Because that Adam they talk about, hi, how you doing? You know that was the red Adam, and it's, and it's all it's all just a lie fabricated. It's like and they say Lilith came to Adam, and she didn't please him, so she was put away or something. No, <laughs> she was, she was only away. here for yeah. I was here. She was here. Forty eight hours later, and we got real busy. Getting rid of the, not getting rid of, removing the half and half, the half animal and half human beings, so they quit trying to mess with the human and animal uh, evolution separately, the bodies, and put them in lower dimensions. Lily's love, her eyes, would literally, I'd be with her, we'd lure them down into another dimension I built. I just put up a barrier. Lily and I walk right through the barrier. They turn around and it's like, huh, how did we get here? Wow. And they're down there living right now. Um, you know what? Later you on, you will... brought up a really good point. Okay, now you know that everybody and their brother is asking about ascension. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of time, a lot of conversation that I've had with my friends and my husband have been about. Well, is ascension mer more about descension, meaning going back within to the basic atom? You know, going okay. back to the okay. basic structure. I, I'm just wondering what you think about the whole ascension okay, when people thing. People talk about ascension. They're talking about uh, lightening up their energy. Okay, uh, let me tell you what that is. It's called death. Uh, when you leave the body and you leave the physical mass behind, then you're your normal self, which is a higher vibration because the body had the physical body, physical mass has negative properties to it. So that's why when I look at someone, seventy percent negative soul, I'll look at a body, I'll say, okay, it's got the eighteen point seven percent negativity to it because it's because it's got the body involved in it, and it's not the spirit that came from the planet because guy is let you know she's less than one percent negative, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's just the physical mass. Mm -hmm. um, uh, did I? I told you about the four new um, first beings grown in the first dimension, didn't I? Well, you didn't tell us about the specifics of those beings. You mentioned that. Okay. Were the, the, the next one is supposed to come out. It's already looking at almost 67% uh, negative. It's going to be destroyed before it ever gets out. Good. Especially 67%. Yeah. yeah, look what happened with 27.5%. You think God. I'm going to deal with 67? Nah, I'm sorry. You know. Well, so um, what... Okay, Jay, you know, I mean, I have, like, so many questions to ask you, and it's definitely going to, we're going to run way over time, so we're going to have look, some. <laughs> I got a whole lot of wine. Let's talk. Yes. <laughs> Could you pour me a glass, yeah. please? Yeah. <laughs> I got my agua. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So d tell me this. Um, you know, this whole structure has, it basically what it was designed to do was to, Make us big, but through the point of, of oppression, right? Everything yeah, was based uh, on oppression. Uh, exactly. Okay. Abuse you to make you bigger, stronger, so that you could release a bigger cheering section. Okay. So we're in this matrix. Everything's about oppression, including every agency, every institution that the well, government has created. You know, there's a lot of positive uh, vibration out there, a lot of positive frequencies. You, uh, me, a lot of others, we fight it. We, we, we do what we know is right. There's a lot of us right here <clears throat> on this planet right now. At this moment, it's the dirtiest planet in all creation. Um, but uh, there's we've been fighting against something that even me, when I'm in a body, or excuse me, even Ara, when he's in a body, mm -hmm. um, you're locked up. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I see you all and go into you and crank you up and stuff, I look at your energy. Uh, a lot of people talk about, you know, uh, like these gurus. 
If you study with me, you can learn how to extend your aura 15 or 20 feet, but not 100 <laughs> like me. Oh, for Pete's sake, almost no one can fit in a state anymore. Are you kidding? Uh, most of you, when I look at you, if we drop you in a helicopter, put you in the middle of the U.S., you're wet on the Atlantic and the Pacific, man. You're floating, okay? The strong ones, that's where you all are at. You know, yeah. me, I'm way off planet. Let's not even go there, okay? Yeah. I'm all, of course, you know me. I'm all over the place anyway. But uh, um, that's... Y'all are grown so big, so strong, and what's coming is final freedom. Especially, it's almost like it's almost like retribution, and it kicked them, and it actually bit them in their butt. It did, didn't it, it did. But see, the problem was after I got rid of them, it created a power vacuum, oh, and then my brother, and, then the my boy. brother and sister, uh, yeah, our Amelius and Lydia, the other, the 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 top uh, source, clean source, male and female, they want to start getting involved, but our Amelius and Lilith said, we're the new mother and father, and we're keeping this old abuse way. What they call Jesus Christ, the energy that was in him, was actually uh, human essence. He's gone. He's gone. He literally attacked the hell out of me. I've saved him, I don't know how many times, actually, from the original male and female. And he spun and I uh, dropped my arm a little bit. I was going to cook some, uh, uh, chop up some eggs and stuff, uh, um, uh, onions and stuff to cook some eggs, and literally dropped my arm and just went inside here for a moment, just took over. The knife was kind of fell out of my hand. It started spinning like a buzzsaw, and Whoa. it came it came within a tenth of an inch of cutting the inside of my right leg where that artery is. The bleed. He said, "I'll kill you." He said, "You stop. You start killing these angels and stuff. I'll kill you." I, they they call me Lord now. I'm the new God, and I'm like, I can't believe you're talking to me like that. And buddy, you're dead. It took me over a week. He was so big, and there's so many little pieces of him everywhere. I had to go out and get every little piece. See, that's the problem I'm still having right now. I'm getting rid of the rest of Lydia. She, you know, I, I take care of the big part, and then there's all these little parts. I can wipe out the I can wipe out the uh, uh, cloud, but all the little raindrops that are left, especially when other things are hiding them. When you're in a body, you can't see it. I'm doing everything I can. So, I, I, I've come close. Go ahead. So a lot of what you're looking for is um, the fragmented pieces of their soul, right? That's all it's left. Yeah. Well, the fragmented pieces of their source energy. Yeah, and that's source energy. stuff. Interesting. Yeah, yeah you know, and it's you, bugging a lot of people. You're aligning with, have you ever heard of um, Yellow Rose for Texas? She goes um, by, she goes no, by I can't, Rose. I can't and, a joke about that. Um, uh, no, I, no I, haven't, I haven't heard about it because, and I don't mean this, in any kind of negative, you know, detrimental way whatsoever. But I you see, I see what's over there. I see stuff I know. It is like you know, I, I, I and I don't have time, yeah, to research stuff because I'm just telling what I see. And I gotta go. I gotta hurt and die. I got no, stuff no, to do. No, no, it's just the only reason I bring that up is because she's pretty much the latest uh, deliverer of information uh -huh. that really resonates with a lot of us out there. And she's she aggressive about some of the stuff she says. She's, she she said stuff about there being problems on the other side. She and, also I mean, talks about Jesus not being, you know, Jesus was part of this whole hierarchy. Yeah, that was part yeah, of she's this getting format. she's getting she's getting good info. Actually, she's been getting some good information from some of my family members. You know, I told you Lillian Lillian and I were released. The she's she's got a group of them hanging around her. There's a piece of Lily, a small piece of Lily out. That, that talks with her, um, she's strong. Yeah, she's. I, I really like her. I mean, I I basically put her on my website so that people would become a little bit more familiar with looking at this from a completely different perspective, even if it didn't yeah. align she's with the way pissed. you think, you know? She's pissed. Yeah, she is. She's real pissed. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm talking with her spirit inside right now, and she's literally... Uh, she's like, she's just, she's just saying fed up. Now she's quiet. She's I said, honey, I'm giving you a chance to talk. Uh, she, <laughs> she said, I don't need it. I got my own mouthpiece. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Does. I love you. And she goes, yeah, just keep going pops. Um, <laughs> well, one yeah. of the things, one of the things that she has mentioned, uh, that is kind of a, a mind screw, if you want to call it that is the uh -huh. fact that it's only been a hundred years. Now, she talks about how it's only been 100 years, how time is relative, how basically each of the civilizations like the Sumerian culture and the Egyptian culture 
and so on and so forth, that each one of those has been layered on top of the other, and really it's only a duplication of the one before. It's just that they kind of changed the setting of the stage. I'm wondering how um, you think about that's, that. that. That That's not true, however. Um I'm paraphrasing where, where, for her. I'm where, just giving you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, where she where she's getting this, uh, I, I understand because I'm looking at it. A lot of things happen in a hundred year periods in a century. Okay, um, the same basic process happened in Egypt. Uh, the, the The rules of Egypt came from Atlantis. I remember that. Um, I was Osiris and Anna, uh, a very close someone really close to me, just sent us some more money today. She's in Florida. She's going through hell. She's been really picked on. She was Cleopatra number seven. Uh, she was uh, Isis. Um, I was Osiris. Get a load of this. Um, I guess this makes me seem like the kinkiest old man uh, in overalls ever. Um, uh, I, she and I were together, fell madly in love. Um, she was pregnant, and then her uncle or something uh, was the main ruler and came back in, was real PO'd about me being there because he had some negative issues. He had these guys with him with these like huge axe things, like the the guys that chopped the head off with the uh, hood or something, mm-hmm. and literally started yeah. chopping me to death right there in front of her. I left that body. I went inside her. I was Horace. Interesting. I, I literally came right out because at that point, it was she, that that body was so it was the embryo was so small, there was nothing else put in there. So I just came right out, went right in there. I can remember something about horror. So let me t- let me just throw this one thing out there. Something that really bugs me. There's things about different lives I've had where things really bug me. Um, uh, um, uh, what, um, I'm picking out different things. I got different guys talking parts of me talking to me. It's like stop, guys, um, and, and they won't shut up. That's the hardest thing trying to deal with it. Um, uh, um, well, you were talking about Horace. Yeah. Uh, um, they, um, Thoth. Okay. Uh, T-H-O-T-H. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was 37% negative, okay? He was hanging around from uh, um, Atlantis. They called him the priest king. He was not a king. He was a low-level, he was like a priest associate. He wasn't actually a regular priest. Hmm. Uh, the emerald tablets were were made, well, were brought over uh, from uh, Atlantis uh, by by Osiris, they belonged to Horus when I was Horus. Okay, I made them as Osiris in Atlantis. I, it, it's just like the crystal skulls, same thing, just using source energy. Merlin turned lead to gold using source energy within the field, which is source energy, literally, to transmute something. It's just changing the matter. Uh, I mean, not just, I can't do it, but I mean, it, it, when when the situation's made where it can happen, it's just a simple thing. Um and anyway, uh, um, and then he wrote his own stuff on there. He stole the tablets and then wrote his own stuff on there. And it's all it, it's there's there's wow. a little bit of truth here and there, but it's a bunch of lies on it. The emerald uh, tablets. So it's just like it's just, everything else. It's all been bastardized. Yeah, manipulated. yeah. He, he 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 wanted to glorify himself and throw That's his own bad. message out there instead of making it what it should be about everyone else. Is there it's anything, not the self? Is, is there anything on? this planet in this format that you feel is a hundred percent pure information of ancient books, scriptures, documents. Is there anything that hasn't Um, been tainted? The the only thing that's like that is some of the crystals that have memories in them Mm. because a crystal will never lie. A good quartz crystal literally holds the truth. Um, uh, I was walking by a, uh, a crystal one day, and I heard something go, hey. And um, I, I, it was like, it was. It, I was yelling at myself, but it was something nasty. I turned around ready to fight, and I'm like, what? And then he goes, over here. And I'm like, and I just got pulled right in. I looked at it. I said, let me look at this crystal. I pulled it out and held it. And I actually went back into Atlantis when I was a red atom. Uh, you know the pit? We had a pit, a crystal pit over there. Um, I, I Again, it was using... Uh, um, uh, um, just metaphysically making it by a uh, transmutation, mm-hmm. uh, just making uh, the crystals and making a pit. And then there was a uh, hole drilled all the way down through the magma. This is what sank Atlantis. Uh, it, it, uh, drilling a hole all the way down through the, um, the crust into the magma. And then you put a special, made a special crystal to go over the top of that. 
And then special crystals here, another layer right here, and like little spikes coming out. And then that's what, and then that with the solar coming from the star, from the sun, the, the thermal energy coming up, that created the energy necessary with those crystals to focus it to run ships. There are the starships everywhere. Um, you know, well, they're not starships, but, um, you know, the ships that float around on the planet and stuff move around. Um, Anyway, um, <clears throat> there was this one fight. This is what I saw. I saw myself standing right next to, right near the pit, and I was guarding it. Nobody was going to come up there. I was a freak. Uh, but there's like a thousand uh, uh, red atoms over here, uh, red adamics over here, another thousand red adamics over there, and they're actually fighting. And it was a positive and negative where they were going at each other. And then there was so much energy built up by everybody because everybody was strong, the DNA and abilities. And then I was getting real pissed, so I'm cranking up. The the um, the um, uh, pit was already running hard. All that extra energy went in there and literally, poof, it exploded. And a piece of, the, uh, of it broke off and it landed right next to me and I just picked it up and looked at it. That's the piece. Wow. So when I have the money, if I do before I go, I'm going to buy that thing and you know give it to Michelle. That's so cool. Uh, because, it's, yeah, it's like it's like Max. You know, all the crystal skulls, there are 12 of them. Arrow made them. The 13th one was being made to be – it hasn't been made yet. It was going to be made in Brazil out of uh, some very special uh, um, <clears throat> quartz over there. But it's Brazilian uh, quartz. It has gold in it. You know, I mean, it has a, a yellow goldish hue to it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't ha actually have gold in there. It's like the acidic, you know, uh, rain and whatever that's over there <clears throat> gives it that color. And it was transmutated it into another skull. Uh, eight of them made on this planet, four of them made off planet and brought here. Um, Very cool. And, yeah, but anyway, there's there's so much stuff going on. But crystals, when you can read it, they won't lie. I've gone by crystal shops and actually seen them. Um, they talk. And, you know, I, they've seen murders and stuff, and I just wipe them out and tell them I love them, and they're, they're happy. Um, <clears throat> it's, so, it's funny because I, I received um, a gift from a, get this, a Baptist... Pleiadian, American Indian. Quite a combo. <laughs> In Arkansas, who gave me a golden healer. That, and, I was going to say, he's really in touch with uh, the earth. You know, uh, crystals and stuff and stones. And I'm so into this crystal, and I use it for all my missions and everything, because it's a transmitter yeah. and receiver. And I couldn't yeah. find it yesterday. I was in tears. It was like a part of me. I was just freaking out. I couldn't find it. Did, did you find it? I did. Okay. Where uh, was it? It was right in my purse. Okay. And I had was looked your, in my purse. Was your purse on the couch? Where was it? It was in my room, bedroom. Okay. It was very strange. Oh, is that, is that where you're at? Yes. Okay, because it looks like a couch behind you, and I'm seeing it. On the, <laughs> I'm okay. trying to figure out what I'm okay, looking well, at. Now that, now that that's been pointed out, Jay, I want everyone to know that my husband came in here and said, you know, it's really sad that you do all your interviews on your bed. You know, I think we should put a blanket up over the pillows. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's right. I thought it was a couch. You fooled me. Uh, <laughs> Jay can't see diddly squat. Um, he can't tell a couch from a uh, bed from a couch. Let me tell you something about your husband. He's pretty cool. He's very grounded. He's soft. He's got a lot of uh, softer tan brown energy to him. Uh, he's intelligent. He takes his time and he makes his way through things. Definitely. But he's thorough and he's very much to the point. He's not aggressive, but he's firm. Yes, yes, very much so. And he yeah. was he was one of the guys that oversaw the blue crystal in Atlantis. The really yeah. gigantic one. Yeah, there, there's so much stuff over there that, uh, um, I don't know. Uh, or one of it's, them. It's sad. It frustrates me. Um, uh, I've been attacked so much so long, you know, uh, it's, just, I'm, I'm, it's hard to really get me too pissed off anymore. But I'm, it's when, when I look at everything... I see how wonderful it is, and I feel how much I love it. And to see what it's gone through, uh, sometimes I actually have to ask myself, what's the matter with me? Why did I wait this long to do what I did? Mm -hmm. Because poor Lily's hurt so bad and everything else. And I know that there's an answer to this, and there's a good reason for it, but I can't access it while I'm stuck in this body. Yeah. yeah. You know? That's it's really, like, that's rough. That's yeah, really yeah, rough. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 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 Dr. Kate Brooks, uh, uh, she and I have had a lot of lives together. She's here in Atlanta, 
And she was telling me one time, she we were talking, she looked at me and she goes, you even fight when you're asleep. And I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> and there's a lot of that going on. In fact, I just wanted to let oh, you yeah. know, we've got about, I've got maybe five minutes. Okay, um, i got to shut up. Go ahead. Before I tie up this. But before I do that, last weekend, can you give us an FYI of how you saw, I mean, there's some major stuff that went down last weekend, and I felt that it was very victorious. I wanted to also share with you one of the other people that I talked to. He said that he's pretty sure that uh, Bush and Cheney were extracted off world, extracted off here, finally. Um, no, but see, the thing oh. is, there was something that happened in Source Energy that um, it, it made a big change. And it's the the way when people look at two two individuals <clears throat> and and think that and because we have to think with a physical mind and we want to blame them for what's going on. Remember, it's the other side that runs the bodies. So it's the other side that's causing a problem. That's where the real problem is. That's why it was imperative for anything good to happen to everybody or anybody is to get rid of the original mother and father. Um, that time you're talking about, I believe that's just a little bit after uh, the point where I, I had my foot broken. Mm. And then when that happened, then a statement was made within me by Ara. And that's when I, I was mentioning that he was kind of starting to kill me, um, but he didn't. And he told the other side, he goes, I'll bring him out of the body now. And then literally he cranked up my blood pressure. I called up Michelle and I said, sweetie, I said, look, um, I'm not, it's not time for me to go. Don't be upset, but right now I'm dying. Um, I was, you know, taking me out, but not, it won't be all the way. It's to teach them a lesson. So they'll quit messing with me because breaking my foot twice, all the metatarsal bones on my left foot while I'm sleeping? I didn't even get up. I don't even have a footboard. I couldn't kick anything. You know, that's why uh, on, on YouTube where I, the, the video was like first and second time, you know, it, it's a, I actually show you the foot and you can look at it. There's no mark where it got hit with anything. But see, that's when the statement was finally made by the sleeping part of me saying, that's it. That's it. And then, you know what? And then like right now, they're, they can't wait for me to get out of the body, get home, especially the animals. Uh, because I got work to do, and my work is for everyone. The animals, uh, the, the Fae called me father first because Lily and I made the Fae bodies, okay? But the animals called me father. Uh, my Black Panther at, uh, um, power animal, and I, I said, thank you, but why you say that? And he said, do you understand how many lives you've given to save the smallest of us? You, you know, being source is one thing, but you've been the one who's been the father. Whether you, you know, whether we came from you or not, it doesn't to matter. That's to what protect, you are. To protect, yeah. and serve. To, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's why I kind of call myself like a, the big brother. Yeah. But, you know, that, that's, uh, and I was, uh, I was almost in tears. You know, I, I started, I started tearing up. Um, I have nothing but love and compassion for everything. You know, um, it's interesting you say that because I never, I never imagined myself to be doing what I'm doing today. I did yeah. imagine myself doing some sort of major planetary work, but I didn't see it yeah. as, at all in this capacity. And when I started doing radio shows, I realized that, I mean, they're very rare, but even those that write in a nasty gram to you, you know, yeah. like they've oh, yeah. they yeah. got to write some really nasty thing to you in email. Yeah. And, and you just sit there and go, How, like, is this all you have time to do? You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But even that, being in the position I'm in, it, it has really facilitated, I have such a love. I really genuinely want to serve and help. And when you talked about the difficulty of being in this planet, I think that's the ultimate thing that comes out of it, is compassion. Yeah. 2017, things are really going to pick up for you. 2018 and 2019, somewhere around there. You're going to be flying around, and it ain't going to be on an airplane. <laughs> Do I have to wait that long? Hey, it's it's up to them when they show themselves. And when they do, it will be a grand I can't spectacle. Wait. Okay, it's going to be in force. Wait. 
And then people, the idea is for people to understand, hey, yo, we're here. That you know, we're using this guy for a parking lot. Um, I'm I, supposed I do to have be one. really involved with that whole thing. I mean, I have well, been told that that's, over that's and why over. You're on the ship. Yeah. There'll be a Sepoyan right next to you, uh, actually holding your hand. And leads you. You're on the left. He's on the right. And he's going to lead you up to the window where you can see the earth. And the first thing you're going to do is just go around the earth and see stuff. Far and they're going to talk to you about different things. Far we out. had there. There's a resistance force here on the planet, Anunnaki resistance. After I attacked the uh, the seven Anunnaki clans and everything, like I said, that next morning I went downstairs and that uh, you know that that one other Anunnaki gentleman. He was from the resistance force here. He's reptilian, and he said, "Why did you know? Why'd you let him go?" And I was like, you know, what's going on? What is he talking about? I, I know. I apologize. The uh, listeners don't know about that. That was what we talked about earlier. Hey, we'll but... be doing that in the next interview because you guys sure. can tell there's an awful lot to cover here. But <laughs> yeah. um, so do, Jake do you... can't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's just because of the nature of the discussion that we are participating in, you know, there's just too much to cover in the small period of time. So with that said, can you give us a little snippet of what you think has been going on in the, like the last month or so. It seems like there's an awful lot of uh, war with the galactic forces. Yeah. Um, I keep getting there that, is. and there, I'm wondering there, what you think about that. There is. One of our family members got attacked recently. Um, I'm going to have to release a video about it in the next few days. <clears throat> and uh, the ship that attacked them was compressed into find a little piece of particulate matter and that's what brought the Anunnaki uh, ambassador and his aide to my house wow. when I was talking with Michelle and then that also uh, it facilitated my going after them uh, as my true self and uh, killing a bunch of them so um, wow. the war is on but see things have to be brought to a head so that they can be taken care of um, I and have that has happened that, now right that, is, that has started yeah. yes it, yeah. it, the, the war is on wow yeah, and I and can't. I can't wait. I love it. Now, now I was also told by some other light warriors that I know that they're now receiving uh, visitations from mm -hmm. the positive reptilians that are yeah. coming here it, in in battalions of like six and eight. They're 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 here. They've been here for a while. Some okay. of the Drac, um, um, the first uh, life, the Lily and I, what we had. We were, I was Draku, she was Dracana. We were the first, uh, the real Adam and Eve of all creation. Uh, they're a very old race, very powerful. They, when they get involved, when they walk into the room, everyone shuts up. Mm. I mean, th this is power. This is original power. Um, uh, in San Francisco, there's a very strong, I'm not giving away anything that no one doesn't know that's involved in what's going on with the actual war. Um, in uh, San Antonio, we have a very strong uh, um, uh, resistance. Uh, San Antonio, I'm sorry, uh, San Francisco, we have a very strong uh, resistance. And uh, uh, just a bit south of that, uh, they are the, the problem children here in California, the Anunnaki group there, literally tried to attack them. They wound up just kind of getting all frayed up, fried up, and their heads just go like a, they puff a little bit and the blood comes out everywhere. Some of them bleed green. It's kind of weird. Um, oh, uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> You know, Jay, if all of us could see through your eyes, I think we'd have a really scared group of people, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> it just just if, if you were in the house when stuff starts flying around, you know, and I'm like, cut that out. And the fae, the fae go running around, and my dog chase them. Arr, arr. And said, it's all right, it's all right. And they go underneath and hide in the shadows, and they're gone. And the, my dogs look at me like, what the heck? And, you know, it's like, oh, well. Well, listen, everybody, I just want you all to th be, be, just know that we're grateful that you've uh, listened in today, listening to Jay Essex, who, in my opinion, is just fascinating to listen to. And I, I obviously need to have him back for a second, uh, possibly even more than that, series so that we can get a little bit different perspective of what it's like to see things through his eyes. Uh, you can visit his website at jessex.com, or you can also go to spiritualsymposiums.com. And uh, hopefully next time we can go into some of the products that he has that look really, really cool. He's really uh, a specialist in stones and crystals and things like that, as you can already tell. He speaks to them all the time. And we'll pro hopefully dive into that next time. How's that, Jay? Hey, it sounds like a winner. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, do you have any stones over there you want me to crank up real quick? Oh, 
my god, I have eight hundred pounds of of crystals that I was told oh, I oh, need, and they're oh, this okay. big. Oh, uh, well, that, that's no problem. I uh, cranked up uh, this one lady. I was cranking her up, and then I said, I, 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 she said, I'll get the stones. I said, just leave them alone. I'm just going to do everything in the house, and I did. And I was cranking her up real hard, cranking the house up real hard, and I said, All right, are you doing some building? Is there a lot of bricks outside somewhere because I'm cranking them up too? She goes, no, but the house is made of brick. I said, okay, you're going to film me everywhere you go in the house. <laughs> so she can feel, yeah, everywhere she goes in the house, and she feels that energy coming around. The poor woman, her head's probably blowing up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, let's let everybody go. Thank you, everyone. I love you. Please visit my website at galacticconnection.com. And as always, remember that we are a free uh, 24-7 site providing an online library for you. We do take donations if you feel so compelled to share. And I just want to thank everybody. Also, check in with our implant removal series, which is top-notch. Talk to you soon. I love you guys. And we will see you next week on the other side. Maybe. (laughs) <laughs> maybe right <laughs> why not yeah. let's do it <laughs> take Hit care party. <laughs> <laughs>